So the Xiaomi 13 Pro, which only just launched about a month ago, is already a very clever feature-packed flagship handset that I really rather ruddy liked. And yet already Xiaomi has basically said, no, nah, not good enough, get it in the bin, and released this even more premium device, the Xiaomi 13 Ultra. So what exactly is so ultra about it? Well, let's whip the Xiaomi 13 Ultra on out of the box, take you on a full-on tour, I'll be testing out the camera tech, the gaming chops, all that good stuff. And for more on the latest and greatest tech, please do pork subscribe and ding that notifications bell. Cheers. So first up, what do you get in this mysterious black box? Well, you've got yourself a Xiaomi 13 Ultra. You've got an actually surprisingly dinky 90 watt fast charger, USB type C cable, You've got a protective cover, although slapping this on the Xiaomi 13 Ultra would basically be a hate crime because it looks so gorgeous without it. And yet if we slap this thing on, it looks like an awful plastic toy. Ugh. And last up you've got something in Chinese, which I don't know what it says. And that's everything stuffed inside of the box. So now the exciting bit, I'm going to jam my SIM in there, stop testing out the Xiaomi 13 Ultra properly. Oh, and in case you're wondering, it's a double-sided SIM tray, but no space in there from micro SD memory cards. All right, another day, another absolutely flipping massive smartphone. The Xiaomi 13 Ultra is a 6.73 inch. I was going to say Godzilla, although that title more rightly belongs to Samsung's Galaxy S23 Ultra. And yes, it is the same size as the Xiaomi 13 Pro, although the Ultra certainly has the thicker frame, thick with all of the Cs, and the bigger camera bump as well. And much like Samsung's Galaxy S23 Ultra, the screen is ever so slightly curved at the edges, but it's a lot more subtle than previous flagships. It's more of a subtle bend now where that glass meets the metal frame. And thankfully I've had bugger all responsiveness issues these past few days with the Xiaomi 13 Ultra, even when I'm clutching it really tight, as you can see the screen stays responsive. And yes, like the Xiaomi 13 Pro, this Ultra model is a hefty bugger as well, a snifter under 230 Gs. So certainly if you're paranoid about somebody potentially nicking your phone out of your pocket when you're in a busy area or something, well, this is the one for you. Because if this thing got lifted out of your jeans, you'd notice instantly. Like somebody trying to nick Sisyphus's boulder. There's Texpert ramping it up a notch with a bit of Greek mythology simile action. Now just like that Pro model, the Ultra comes with Gorilla Glass Victus up front and a metal frame, but flip it around back and it couldn't really be much more different. You see, the Pro sports a ceramic back, rather fetching, available in either black or white. But the Ultra, well, this bad boy comes with a sultry nanotech silicon leather arse. Oof! So you got that soft touch, textured finish, just feels absolutely lush against your palm. And this doesn't quite stretch the whole width of that back end, as you can see there. You've also got a curved metal frame either side. You can pick up the Xiaomi 13 Ultra in white or black, but frankly, why wouldn't you go for this gorgeous olive green option? But as was much discussed before the Xiaomi 13 Ultra was even released, that back end does raise up as you get towards the camera bump, as you can see there. And then when you factor in the camera bump as well, this is one girthy bugger. Yeah, Techspert Girth Awards, definitely the Xiaomi 13 Ultra is a shoe in Gotta say though, I love Xiaomi's design. I like the look of that camera bump. I like the gold ring that surrounds it. Gives it a kind of a fetching halo effect and I just like some of the finer detail in it as well, something that was missing from Samsung's Galaxy S23 Ultra. And just like the Xiaomi 13 Pro, the Xiaomi 13 Ultra is IP68 water and dust resistant, so no worries if you drop it in the sink, the bath, your hot tub, whatever you want to do. I'm not sure what effect water and other liquids will have long term on that lovely gorgeous fake leather back of course, but um, yeah. Now the software experience here on the Xiaomi 13 Ultra is very similar to what we got on that Xiaomi 13 Pro. It's once again Android 13 with MIUI 14 slathered on top. However, my model of the Ultra did actually come from China and therefore it came without any Google services whatsoever. There was no Google Play Store even. So I spent a good uh, couple of hours downloading an APK for the Play Store from APK Mirror and getting all my other apps installed. As you can see, still got quite a lot of the original Chinese ones. I've got no idea what any of these things do. Apart from good old TikTok, of course, the Dolphin one looks fun, but I'm kind of terrified to touch it just in case. So yes, as with all Xiaomi smartphones, it does come absolutely packed with quite a lot of crapware. And Xiaomi has already promised us a proper global launch for the Xiaomi 13 Ultra, unlike last year's Ultra models. So fingers crossed if and when that happens, it should land in the UK with all of those Google services already pre-installed. 
And with that all done, it's your regular MIUI experience. You've got the likes of the control center, for instance, 100% ripped off from iOS, but I really rather like it. And whenever you load up a media app like YouTube, for instance, you've got this handy little video toolbox you can drag out. Got some great features in here. You can tweak the audio outputs using the Dolby Atmos icon. You can also continue the YouTube video playback with the screen off. That's a YouTube premium feature, so uh, good to have it on here. It likes the screen record, etc. A good bit of upscaling as well for your low quality content. Of course, does this actually do anything at all? I find that it doesn't really make much of an impact at all. So this is it without the upscaling. And this is the video with the upscaling. So much better. Got quite a lot of other bonus MIUI features chucked in there, like the gaming mode, which we'll bang on about in a bit. And just like the Pro, Xiaomi should be offering three years of Android OS updates and five years of security updates with the Ultra, so at least it's not going to be obsolete after just a few months. And while the Xiaomi 13 Pro came with up to 512 gigs of storage, here on the Ultra you can boost that up to one terabyte if you want, otherwise you can see I've got 512 on here as well. And as we saw previously, absolutely bugger all room for a micro SD memory card in this thing. But you know, as long as you're not shooting shag loads of 8K video or downloading 20 copies of Genshin Impact, you should be fine. And so far, again, just like the Pro, I've been getting on really well with the in-display fingerprint sensor here on the Xiaomi 13 Ultra. It is just an optical effort, not a ultrasonic one like on the Galaxy S23 Ultra, but it seems responsive. Certainly hasn't let me down so far, even when my thumbs are a little bit moist. And if your hands are otherwise engaged, you can always use a bit of face and lock instead, which again, super swift and responsive, if not quite as secure as that fingerprint sensor. Now, when it comes to the display tech, there's bugger all discernible difference between the Xiaomi 13 Ultra and that Pro. What you have here is another almighty 6.73 inch OLED display. It's a Quad HD Plus panel, so pumps out super crisp 3200 by 1440 pixel visuals. And because it's an OLED, yes, you got those poppy colors. You got that lovely, luscious contrast. Black's so dark, you feel like you could actually fall into them. You got full support for Dolby Vision as well as HDR10+, etc. Both mod by only a dinky wee selfie cam orifice up top. They're both LTPO tech as well, so they scale all the way from 1 hertz up to 120 hertz, depending on what you're up to, what app you're using. In fact, the only difference that I've noticed is that the Ultra's display can be boosted to even brighter levels. It now maxes out at 2600 nits. So this thing won't just singe your retinas, it'll melt your bloody face off. And the Xiaomi 13 Ultra also sports a really rather good stereo speaker setup. Let's just pump that volume and give you a bit of a demonstration. View and for more on the latest and greatest tech, please do plug subscribe and ding that notifications bell. Cheers. I mean, it's absurd just how thin and light this thing is. You could actually hoi this in your toddler's backpack and get them to look at it around for you all day. So as you can hopefully hear there, powerfully loud when you max out that volume and yet the clarity remains pretty crisp. You can still clearly hear everything that is said. Dialogue isn't garbled or anything like that. So I found that even if I'm outdoors, somewhere quite noisy, music being blared out of speakers, all kinds of stuff, I can still clearly hear what's going on if I'm kicking back with a bit of YouTube or Crunchyroll or whatever. As you'd expect from a flagship phone these days, though, absolutely no headphone jack action, so it is Bluetooth 5.3 all the way. You've got LDAC support, high-res audio support, exactly as you'd expect. So certainly streaming audio from this thing to a pair of Bluetooth headphones. If it's a good pair of headphones, you'll hear all those crispy details. You got that Dolby Atmos support, but a graphics equalizer action as well. So performance, and unsurprisingly, like pretty much every other flagship smartphone in 2023, Xiaomi has gone with Qualcomm Snapdragon 8 Gen 2 to power this absolute behemoth. And yes, that is the same chipset that powers the Xiaomi 13 Pro. But as you can see there, even though they're powered by the same Snapdragon 8 Gen 2 chipset, the Ultra does actually spaff out higher Geekbench 6 scores. And that's most likely because my Ultra model comes with 16 gigs of RAM compared with the 12 gigs that I've got in the Pro. So just like the Pro, the Ultra model can basically blaze through any game out there. Genshin Impact on the highest graphic settings at 60 frames per second, the Xiaomi 13 Ultra absolutely mullers it. That frame rate stays nice and steady, even when the action gets pretty full on. 
And even when you've been gaming for a good while as well, I found that even after an hour of gameplay, the back end of the Xiaomi 13 Ultra is certainly starting to get a little bit toasty especially up towards the top end. That leathery arse was getting a little bit warm under my fingertips, but not to a troublesome degree, that's for sure, and certainly not to a point where it actually impacted the performance at all. And that's in part thanks to Xiaomi's liquid cool tech, including a massive vapor chamber, very similar setup to the Pro. And like the Pro, you once again have a fantastic gaming mode, which is packed to the tits with brilliant features. Still help you get the best possible performance, record the action, do whatever you want. Oh sh** and being attacked. As for the battery, well it's a bit bigger here on the Ultra compared with the Pro, not by much, like we're talking 5000 mAh capacity here on the Ultra, 4820 I believe it was on the Pro. And for the first few days, certainly the battery life has been perfectly solid here on the Ultra, we're talking around 6 hours of screen on time before we start to get into proper battery saver mode, although when I have been making lots of use of the camera, shooting a fair bit of 4K video, taking lots of photos, well that has certainly drain the battery considerably faster. So I will keep on testing the Xiaomi 13 Ultra for my proper full in-depth review, but I'd say that more demanding users should be satisfied. And when it comes to recharging, the Ultra is actually a wee bit slower than the Pro model. It's got 90 watt wide charging compared with 120 watt wide charging, but I've still found that basically don't bother plugging this thing overnight to charge it up. Just when you get up in the morning, bung a cable in its bottom, go and have a shave, cry in the shower, do whatever you need to do. And then by the time you come out again, it'll basically be filled up. And also you do have 50 watt wireless charging here on the Xiaomi 13 Ultra, but I struggled to get this to work with my own personal charging stand, possibly because it's so bloody big and thick. So just bear that in mind. So let's finish up this unboxing and five day review with the squint at the camera tech and this is one area where Xiaomi has really mixed things up for the Ultra compared with the Xiaomi 13 Pro. Now you've got the same 50 megapixel primary shooter on the Ultra as the Pro, it's that massive one inch IMX989 sensor from Sony with a bit of hyper optical image stabilization to help prevent handshakes from ruining your shot. However there is one massive difference and that is the fact that the Ultra has a dual aperture setup. Drag down the camera settings and you will see the aperture option. Give this a little tappy tap and as you can see there you can swap between f1.9 and f4.0 otherwise you can just leave it on auto if you can't be bothered to think about it. And this is a great little feature you can obviously swap to f1.9 for those lower light shots and swap between the two to get a different depth of field. And as well as changing up the aperture you've got loads of other camera settings to piddle about with including the Leica style. I like to leave this on authentic for a more natural finish, but you can chuck it on like a vibrant if you really want to boost those visuals, have more poppy colours. And here's just a few of my sample shots that I snapped over the previous few days with the Xiaomi 13 Ultra. I found it works brilliantly at any time of day, whether you're shooting into bright light, dealing with harsh contrast, or snapping in more ambient surroundings. The focus is fast to act, shutter speed nice and nippy as well, so certainly shooting living subjects is as pain free as it could possibly be on a phone. And as I said, you can play around with the depth of field, get some lovely bokeh style action in your shots, and you've got that dedicated portrait mode to fall back on too. And those night shots certainly seem on a par with the likes of Samsung's Galaxy S23 Ultra. Those tones are boosted a bit, but plenty of detail packed in, despite the lack of light. So certainly so far for me, the Xiaomi 13 Ultra right up there with Samsung's Galaxy S23 Ultra, but I will be doing a side-by-side -side comparison with the two next week, so stay tuned for that. By default, on the auto mode, the Xiaomi 13 Ultra captures 12 megapixel snaps using 4-in-1 pixel binning, but you do have a 50 megapixel high-res mode if you want a bit of that. However, there's bugger all need to capture a high-res shot and then crop in because the Xiaomi 13 Ultra has not just one telephoto lens, but two. So the Xiaomi 13 Pro had a 50 meg Samsung GN1 sensor. The Ultra upgrades this to a 50 meg Sony IMX858 sensor. It's a 75 mm telephoto shooter, f1.8 for improved low light performance and you've got optical image stabilization again. But zoom in further and the Ultra will swap to a 120 mm telephoto shooter, again using a 50 meg IMX898 sensor, this time with an f3.0 aperture and again a bit of OIS action. And as you can see here, the zoom shots on the Xiaomi 13 Ultra are absolutely stunning stuff. You get incredible amounts of detail from a ridiculous distance. And this thing tops off at 120 times zoom, beating even the mighty 100 times space zoom of the Samsung. Although, understandably, things get a bit blotchy and blurry and surreal once you get to those sorts of levels. And then, yes, just like that Pro model, you also have a 50 megapixel ultra wide angle shooter. 
Certainly does the job if you want to fit an awful lot of stuff into frame, you just want a more dramatic shot. Doesn't tinker with those tones too much, you still get a nice natural vibe. And then if you want to shoot some home movies, you can capture footage all the way up to 8K resolution, but you are stuck at 24 frames per second. Otherwise, if you bump it down to the likes of 4K, you can then chuck it up to 60 FPS. And yes, you can once again mess around with that aperture as long as you're shooting with the primary lens. And here's some sample footage that I shot again these last few days. Really, really happy with the results. I think it's right up there again with the Samsungs and the Apples out there. If you've actually got an AK display to enjoy that AK footage, then yes, absolutely stunning stuff. Otherwise, I found my 4K footage had plenty of fine detail packed into every frame. The colors again came out really nice and natural. Stabilization was fantastic as well. Even on those higher levels, you can move and shoot as merrily as you like. And the audio was only really muffled when I was, for instance, crossing a very blustery London bridge. And this Xiaomi blower also does really well for a bit of night footage, right up there with its Oppo rivals. Those visuals don't get too soft and grainy unless it's proper full-on dark. And then up front, if you are a selfie fan, well, you've got a very capable 32 megapixel front-facing shooter. I'm not exactly the world's biggest fan of taking selfies, but even I can appreciate that the Ultra does a pretty fine job, even in tricky lighting if you're shooting against a bright background or in quite ambient surroundings. You'll still tend to get plenty of decent detail, a nice well-balanced shot. However, unlike some rivals, you can't shoot video at 4K resolution using the Xiaomi 13 Ultra's front-facing camera. It does top off at 1080p full HD, but again, you know, pretty good. It's detailed enough so your video doesn't look naff when you view it back on a laptop or whatever. Audio pickup really good as well, so again, this phone is fine for Skype and zooming. So that right there, my lovelies, is what I reckon of the Xiaomi 13 Ultra after using it as my full-time smartphone for just over five days now. And I've got to say, I am getting on with it rather well, even though it's absolutely bloody massive and heavier than a brick. Whatever you're up to, be it capturing some memories, shooting photos and video, or just streaming a bit of Crunchyroll or a podcast or whatever, it just does it so well and without fuss or drama, and it does it all while looking pretty bloody snazzy too. But anyhow, that's what I think so far. Stay tuned for a full in-depth review. It'd be great to hear what you guys reckon of the Xiaomi 13 Ultra down below. Please do plug subscribe and ding that notifications bell for more on the latest and greatest tech, and have yourselves a ruddy, wonderful rest of the week. Cheers everyone. Love you.